All right, what's up, Noah? What's up, Jimmy? Welcome to ADHD Podcast. What's going on? ADHD. Right <laughs> what's going yeah. on, crazies? <laughs> dark in the Hell yeah. Today, man. Fuck yeah, dude. Like, this is, uh, I'm fucking excited about this. You've had a, a, a long story career with some great musicians, and it's still going to this day. Um, record label, you're a CEO of your own record label, correct? Um, Swim with the Sharks? Yeah, I have two. Swimming with Shark Records and Zombie Shark Records, yep. That's awesome. fucking killer, man. Um, you're keeping the dream alive. You know, especially in new metal with Zombie Shark. Um, you guys are still fucking killing it. Um, you guys got, you got great bands, um, great fucking everything. You know, still fucking killing it. Um, I know that you work in marketing with EMP, um, label group, um, along with uh, um, the basis from... The basis for Megadeth, correct? David, um... Dave Ellison. Absolutely, Dave Ellison. And that's what... Yeah. You guys have a great roster over there, too. I mean, you are just yeah. showing it behind the scenes and people don't even know it. Like, this, uh, smoking them. Yeah. I was, uh, I was doing stuff with EMP, which is the label from Dave Ellison for Megadeth, uh, but I'm not doing that so much anymore. I kind of stepped back and uh, started focusing on my own stuff again, hardcore. Um, that's fucking awesome. You know what I mean? And uh, the, the the music you're doing with uh, with Nothing Matters, with Just for Nothing Hatchet, like uh, you guys are, you guys just put out a single recently, um, Deep Space, um, Deep Inside. That song is is really cool. And you guys are doing like, you guys are doing special music there. Like it's not, it's, it's its own thing. If that makes you know what I mean, it's its own thing. It doesn't really. It's not new metal, you know what I mean? I wouldn't classify it as new metal, and I wouldn't classify right. it um, as rock. But you guys are doing, like, your really unique own thing over there. Um, what's yeah. the experience like for you? The new song is uh, Dead Space, Dead Inside. And uh, right before that, we released a track called Fragile Mind. And uh, it's really exciting to work with Jeff Nothing and Tommy Church. They're, they're the best. And uh, and then we've got another great singer, Ian D, and a bassist. Uh, Taylor, and um, we 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 really function really well as a unit, and uh, we're just excited to be making music, and I'm excited to be playing the drums behind that uh, legendary voice. I mean, I, I grew up as a huge Mushroomhead fan, and uh, it's an honor me to be too. playing the group. Sure, definitely, yeah, man. Me too, and, man. Like, uh, yeah, dude, uh, he killed it. Like, he he's he's one of his own thing. You know what I mean? Like, I it's, uh, totally. Totally unique. There's nobody like him. Um, the only person that even came close is probably like a great compliment would be like Mike Patton. And it's, it, it, yeah, too. You know what I mean? It's, it's different. And Mike Patton's a fucking legend. You know what I mean? I think he's like one of the great folks or whatever. Uh, yeah. But no. Jeff, I mean, is, Jeff has a really wide uh, list of influences for sure. And you can hear Faith No More and stuff like that. I mean, Jeff's voice is what drew me to the Mushroom Head in the first place. You know, I, I heard Sun Doesn't Rise and it was over. Yeah. I, Oh, you hit it! Yeah, that was oh a bad my god, that bad motherfucking track. Oh man, that that song still gets because of his vocal lines in there, like gets stuck in my head. Yeah, and, and like you said, it's not it's not really new metal. It's not really. I mean, we're mixing elements of heavy metal, hard rock, industrial, and even some pop elements in there, and just uh, you know, uh, just doing our own thing. How'd you uh, how'd you yeah. hook up with him, man? Oh man, it's it's kind of a crazy story. Like I grew up. Uh, well, let me go all the way back and talk about my two labels real quick. Okay. Like, there's kind okay. of I'm kind of I'm kind of a yin and yang when it comes to music. Like, I first started getting into heavy bands like Metallica, Pantera, Megadeth, uh, Machine Head. I, I loved heavy bands like that, Testament. And so when I started Swimming with Sharks Records, it was kind of keeping true to like the old school classic metal. Um, so the stuff you're going to find on Swimming with Sharks Records is like heavy, uh, classic, traditional heavy metal. Like we have a band called Eye of the Enemy from Australia, and they're yeah. they're basically like Australia's version of Lamb of God. I mean, they're sick. Okay, okay. That's, that's, and that's okay. That's and nice. so, and then, uh, you know, I graduated high school in 2001, and that was right during the huge like new metal boom. Right. And I fell in love with bands like uh, Slipknot, Korn, um, 
Nothing Face, American Head Charge, Spine Shank, all that stuff. Fuck yeah. And uh, so, yeah, whenever I saw that New Metal was making a comeback, I, I wanted to help the cause and be a part of it. Be a, be a part of it, yeah. So I started Zombie Shark Records and started started signing up New Metal bands. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the bands in particular that really caught my attention were like Slipknot, Mushroom Head, uh, Mudvayne, Motor Grader. I, I, I was absolutely in love with bands that like wore masks and had body paint. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Is a performance and, uh, piece instead of just being a, a, a yeah. stagnant band. That's fucking beautiful, man. That's awesome. So uh, whenever I left the Browning, um, I saw that Motor Grader was making a comeback and they were trying to make a return, and so I hit them up on Facebook. I halfway didn't even think they were going to hit me back. I just said, hey, I'm a huge fan. If you ever need a drummer, let me know. And um, much to my surprise, they already knew who I was from the Browning, and they were they were fans of me and the Browning. So they called me immediately and were like, yes, we want you in. So I started flying to California and playing with the band. And um, the rest is history there. Like, I got, to do awesome. the, I got to do the second Motor Grader album, and it was just a dream come true. I, I had Motor Grader posters on my wall when I was growing up, you know. I used to sit in my room and try to play along to the first album. and So that was a trip. And then when Motor Grader ended... Uh, we kind of ended on a sour note and I had tons of people messaging me saying, Hey, Jeffrey Nessing and Tommy Church just left Mushroom Head. You know, you should hit them up. And I was like, yeah, right. Like those dudes don't want to have anything to do with me. But like the more I thought about it and the more messages I got about it, I was like, you know what? It, it can't hurt. Like, so I just hit them up and said, Hey, I played in a band called Motor Grader. I'm a huge Mushroom Head fan. If you ever need a drummer, you know, let me know. And, um, Right, right about that time, they were re they were recording demos and putting together new music, and so I, I just said, "Hey, send me those tracks. I'll go into the studio and I'll knock it out of the park for you." And um, once they heard what I did, uh, now I'm a full fledged member. So there you go. Nothing, dude. Fuck yeah! Facebook's amazing in some ways. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, that's that's crazy. Uh, did you grow up in Ohio, yeah. dude? Where where did you grow up? Yeah, I'm dude, I'm traveling 24/7. I'm always on a plane or a bus or a freaking train. Uh I flew to Michigan to record the drums for these new Nothing songs uh with a producer named Josh Wickman. Uh he produced uh Within the Ruins and King 810 and uh he also helped out with the Motor Grader rec record. He recorded my drums for the Desolation album from Motor Grader. And so I I've kept a good relationship with him. So I flew to Michigan and recorded those tracks. And then um, I flew to Michigan again and uh, drove up to Ohio, to Cleveland, and we rehearsed uh, for a little while, got the songs ready. And we went to Kansas City and played a Rocktoberfest, which was insane. And then we played a Hatrix Fest in Cleveland, which was like a big Halloween show. And uh, right now I'm getting ready to uh, fly back and play some more shows with them up in like uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Philadelphia area. Right on. Are those uh, happening next month or uh, next year? Yeah. It's going to be January 11th and 12th is the next shows. Okay. I've already got my flights booked and everything. <laughs> Good deal. And at, right before I jumped on this call, I got a package on my front door. And uh, it's the new CDs from Nothing. Uh, so the oh, two shit. singles. That, yeah, they look they look sick. I'm, I was so excited to get these, and I just was looking at them as I was calling you guys. But uh, the two singles, Fragile Mind and Dead Space and Dead Space Dead Inside, are on there, <clears throat> and we're selling those right now at uh, NothingMerch.com. You can get the physical singles. Good deal. I'll have to pick one of those That's up, man. I, awesome. Those songs are on repeat on my Spotify, so I'm hearing them. Five six times a day, man. It's good. It's good material, dude. Yeah, and the, you know the the fanboy aspect of me like never leaves. Like when I when I was on tour with Motor Grader and I was playing with bands and I, and I was like touring with bands like Head PE, American Head Charge, Soil. Um, all, like I'm just freaking out the whole time. I mean, they don't know it, but I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. And and to be honest, every time I hear my drums behind Jeff's voice, I'm like, dude, this is uh all the hard work's paying off, you know? <laughs> it's good to hear, man. 
Oh, definitely. So could I ask you, dude, uh, of all the people you've played with, who was your favorite of all, you know, from the mm-hmm. fanboy aspect? Um, well, when I was in the Browning, uh, I got to tour with Fear Factory and Shadows Fall. And um, that was pretty in- intense because I love Fear Factory. And um, when I joined Mortar- when I joined Moto Grader, I got to tour with like all my favorite bands. Uh, American Head Chargers is probably up there. Like, I mean, some unfortunate uh, things have happened with that band yeah. recently, and so I don't. You know, they're not really going to be touring. Who knows when they're going to tour next? I mean, I, I could have very well done their very last tour ever. So that was a huge honor to yeah. tour with American Head Charge. Um, uh, and I, I was even talking to them a little bit recently about maybe doing some fill-in dates. Uh, their drummer right now is Trauma from Head PE. And uh, he hit me up and was like, hey, dude, can you learn these songs? Uh, I might have conflicting dates. And so I was getting all the material ready, practicing American Head Charge stuff. And um, then, you know, just some, some bad things happen and, uh, I hope I hope they pull it together and come out with new music and tour again because I love that band. Yeah, they're they're loved by a lot of people around the planet, man. They're definitely one yeah. of those underground. Like you have to see them live because they are they're pretty fucking heavy. And to to be honest, probably the biggest like fanboy moment that happened to me in my career so far mm-hmm. is very recently. I found myself on stage with Waylon Revis, the ex-singer of Mushroom Head, and Jeffrey Nothing, and Tommy Church, and uh, they reunited on stage, played uh, a couple Mushroom Head tunes, and just to be up there with a mask on, staring through the eye holes at Waylon and Jeff, it was just it was just cool, man, because I, I grew up uh, I grew up idolizing those guys and. Um, that was an honor to play Mushroom Head songs with those dudes on stage. Good deal. Yeah, Waylon's a good guy. He was on one of our episodes about a month ago. We had a good time talking to him. Waylon sounds amazing still. He he he's he's uh he's doing great. He's got all kinds of new music coming out and and uh you know there was a lot of rumors about Jeff not being able to sing anymore and that's just complete and utter bullshit. I mean, if these new songs are any testament to that, Jeff still got it 100%. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of the uh, music publication outlets that I won't mention by names that definitely took our but, episode with him and cut out certain things and rephrased it and made him look like an asshole, which he's not. And uh, you know, I know. it's uh, total and you bullshit. Know, yeah. And you know, I don't want to I don't want to speak for Jeff at all. Um, but he was, he was really kind of, uh, hurt by that because Jeff is a, the yeah. nicest guy. He doesn't have any like ill intentions towards anyone and he's not an arrogant asshole no, or anything, very <clears throat> but you know, he, he, he doesn't have a huge ego. He doesn't think he's better than anyone. And the stuff they were saying, it, it's just like, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. You know, Jeff's a, Jeff's a, Jeff's a great guy. He seems very generous and he seems like uh very humble and that, um, he's he's lucky to be where he's at in this world, and lucky to you know, like he realizes like the, you know, most people don't get to make it like that. You know what I mean? And uh, I think Jeff's just he's a really great guy, man. He takes everything in stride. Yeah, and uh, probably my favorite thing about working in this band with them is like how passionate they are about music. Like, um, the art is very like it has a high priority with Jeff and Tommy. Like they want to make sure the music sounds good and that the lyrics are, are something that people can relate to and appreciate. And, um, so it's all about the art with them first and foremost. And then all the business stuff kind of is secondary. I mean, that stuff's important, but they're not, they want to create badass music and art before they want to make a buck, you know, for sure. So, uh, another question for you, Noah, uh, so you played all around the planet, man. Do you have a favorite venue that you've played so far that was just like, you know, uh, that sticks out in your mind? Yeah, man. I have, um, I have three big ones that are, are kind of stick out in my mind. The first one, uh, I played a huge <laughs> festival called With Full Force Festival in Germany, and. Uh, the Browning, I played that with the Browning, and uh, 
dude, it, this is like such a vivid memory in my mind. Uh, we, so we, I walk out on stage and there's like 60,000 people out there and I raise my drumstick and every single person just starts screaming and like, oh. I, almost blacked, I almost blacked out. I was like, it was just a crazy experience That's to wild. see just a sea of people as far as I can see. And, uh, while we were playing a huge thunderstorm hit and, uh, there was like four or five different circle pits mm -hmm. and lightning was striking the crowd as they were pitting. It was like the most metal. Whoa! Thing that's Holy ever. shit. Did anybody get hurt? <laughs> yeah. People were being carried out in stretchers like while we were playing. Holy fuck. Oh shit. That's some metal acolyb shit. Dude, it was insane. Uh, so that was a big moment because we, we got, I got to play like the other bands on that bill. was just insane. Like Lamb of God and Machine Head and all these huge bands and, um, and then, uh, I got to play Mexico with, uh, Motorhead and Anthrax, uh, and some other bands. I, I was in a band called Pinhead and, uh, I, I toured with them a bunch and, uh, we played a show in Mexico in Guadalajara and, uh, Mexico city and, uh, just a huge, huge crowd. And, uh, in that band, Pinhead, we wore, like, black leather armor with, like, helmets and spikes and masks and shit. It was pretty crazy. Oh, shit, yeah. And then, uh, I did an, I, I've toured the entire, uh, I've toured all around Europe with the Browning, and, um, I got to play in France, in Italy, in, uh, you know, the freaking Netherlands, in, uh, the <laughs> UK, and, uh, Austria was, Austria was just, I, I want to go back to Austria. Yeah. <laughs> it was Halloween. And I went to like a torture dungeon and um, I got to visit these huge chapels that like Beethoven and Mozart played at when they were kids. And Oh, wow. That's heavy. Crazy. That's the coolest, man. Like, I'm serious. Like, that's the coolest. I wanted to be a conductor when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like, that was like my, like kind of like my musical goal when I was a child. I was like, I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> r raise the awesome. ranks and be a conductor and, and write giant overtures and stuff like that and like that's right. what i really wanted to do before i discovered like you know metal discovered alternative music discovered you know I, that's what i really wanted to do man that was my passion yeah i uh, um i studied i studied music education in college i was going to be a band teacher i was going to be a full-blown like drum yeah. line instructor <laughs> but uh yeah i got to be a, a drum major in, in high school you know what i mean i was a drum Oh, drum cool. major in high school, you know what I mean? The, the guy, guy who like yeah. comes out in front of the band, and yeah, I was, I was, yeah. I was on my path, but uh, you know things change, and you know life sets in, and you're like, okay, I want to be a rock star. Fuck this. Yeah, you know? I, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I did drum line. I did drum line in high school, and then I did drum line in college, and I was going to be a band teacher, and then I decided, you know what, I can get my degree and teach when I'm older, uh, but I want to yeah. try to tour and like make shit happen when I'm young. Damn right. Damn right, man. That's fucking sick, dude. You you are fucking you're killing it, dude. Like uh, you you've basically been a steady work musician for like years and years, you know. And then on top of that, you own two labels. That's fucking sick. Like you yeah, are killing man, it, dude. It's all I've been doing for I don't even know how long. Uh, I mean, since I was like 15 in high school, playing shows with my uh, crappy metal band, we thought we were gonna take over the world. We thought we were going to do the next Pantera, you know? Um, so as a music professional, like, uh, um, do you teach the people that, that you wind up picking up? Like, um, I always catch bands, they sell themselves short. You know what I mean? There's a lot of bands that they'll sell themselves short. They'll use, and it's in their language that they say it, that like, you, you come up with a guy and he's in a great band, but he always refers to himself as a local band, you know what I mean? We're a local band. Um, what are some of the things that you, you teach people to like get, do you teach people to get away from those kind of tendencies? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's so much as not looking at yourself as a local band. I mean, to be honest, I don't know how to put this into words, but to maybe em embrace that even, cause like everybody has <clears throat> to start somewhere. And uh, a lot of bands right. try to get ahead of themselves and um, try to do a lot of stuff that they're not ready for, like try to get endorsements and managers. And right. one thing I always, one thing I always stress to everyone is to focus on the music 100 percent, 
and the rest will fall into place. Like if your songs are there and your content and your art is impeccable and that stuff's really good, then all the other things that you dream about, booking agents, managers, record labels, all that stuff will fall into place when the time is right. But if you try to chase that stuff too early, um, yeah. it can it can distract you from what's really important. And <clears throat> But, um, uh, yeah, I know what you mean, though, uh, as far as, uh, I, I guess, musicians and bands being down on themselves. And, um, like, like, if you were an Ohio band, you know what I mean, um, and you were from Cleveland, like... Saying that you're a Cleveland band is better than saying, like, on a publication, you're a local band, and we play with other local bands. We play with other, other other Cleveland bands. You know what I mean? We are a Cleveland band. We still represent the same thing, but don't give off the same connotation, if that makes sense. Um, um, <clears throat> well, you just... I just know... Yeah, I just noticed people do that, and I, I was just wondering if you what your take was on it. I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, all I can really say is don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do. Like, if you want to break out of your, if you want to break, you know, like I said, I think I'm, I think I'm kind of, I'm seeing your point, but like, if just embrace it, man, dominate that scene, dominate that Absolutely. area, and Absolutely. Be, become the Cleveland mm-hmm. band. You know, if you're from Cleveland, become the Cleveland band and then start branching out and doing more regional stuff and getting your name out there. And Good deal. Just embrace it. What are some of your uh, pet peeves on the road? What what pisses you off when you're you're away from home? <laughs> oh God, how much time do we have? <laughs> as long as you want, man. As, as long as, as you want. want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lo- I love being on the road. And I'm sure you've heard musicians say this a million times before, but it's not all glitz and glamour uh, all the time. I mean, for some bands out there it is, but for the 92% of the rest of us, it is uh, is work. Like, every tour I've done, I haven't had a crew at all or a driver. So I, I've drove most of the bands I've been in. I was the main one of the main drivers. Mm-hmm. I've driven right. tens of thousands of miles probably. And um, so that's a big pet peeve is not getting enough sleep because even when you do get to sleep, you have no idea if it's going to be in a van or on a venue floor or in some random person's house. So not getting enough sleep is a big one. And then when you're on the road and you're stuck in a vessel, whether it be a bus or a van with a bunch of other people, uh, if you're not getting along, that just it just spoils the entire thing. Like people have to be taking care of themselves and not doing drugs and not partying all the time. And like kind of, you kind of need people that are a little bit more serious about it and aren't just wanting to party 24 seven. Cause that will catch up with you real quick. Like if you're out there doing a 90 day run, you're playing like 70 shows in a row, you know, people can't be eating gas station burritos and, Chugging a twelve pack every night, it's gonna catch up with you. So, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, druggies and alcoholics can really uh, put a dampener on your situation quick. <laughs> Interesting. And That's, I hate. Yeah. Another thing I hate is fucking entitled and self-empowered, like crazy egotistical, uh, like venue owners and uh, like sound guys. And people that work the door just treating you like garbage. Um, Some people need to be a little bit more humble and have a better attitude because, I mean, we're out out there driving thousands of miles around the country, barely eating, barely sleeping, and then we get to the venue and everybody there has a sour attitude and and treating you like shit. Like, I've really grown to appreciate the people that are, like, really cool and down to earth and, like, you know, are in in it to win it with you. Makes a lot of sense, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. You know, in, unless you're you're dealing with the sound guy that uh, is running all your backtracks, you know what I mean? Like your personal person, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, dude, guys can be dicks. I, I've seen people, sound guys, ruin people's sets on purpose. Yeah, you, you know. know? Um, um, and I know that from experience. I'm a sound guy. I've never done that to anybody, but I've seen other people do it. You know what I mean? They'll purposely oh, yeah. just, just dick off, you know what I mean? And just 
they won't really care about their job, and that that's just disgusting to me. Dude, um, I played a show. I was I was touring with the Browning one time, and we played this show, and uh, the sound guy was drunk, and he kept like messing with the controls and like turning the sound off and on, and like and, like laughing, and he totally ruined this band set. And the the band members like like <clears throat> jumped off stage while they were playing and like flipped the soundboard. It was insane. Jesus Christ! Holy cow, man! That's yeah, and then the cops nuts. came, and it was a nightmare. Oh wow. Oh, fucking wow. Jesus, dude. Oh, man. Um, I actually had a band. Um, so, like, you guys probably run an X32 Live. Like, I have one. Um, I actually had a band hack my IP address and use the app to change my settings. Wow. A band did that. And he didn't, <laughs> they didn't do it for their own. They didn't do it for their own fucking set. They did it for the openers. And so, like, wow. I was catching them. They were moving my settings, and I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Like, you bunch of fucking assholes. And I'm not going to say really what band it is, but, dude, it was crazy, man. Just, like, and they, they acted like a bunch of punks on stage, and just they were just complete assholes. And uh, But, yeah, they, they thought it was funny. They would laugh about it. Like, you would see them across the, the way of the venue, and, like, with the laptop open, just, like, fucking with settings. And, like, my wow. faders would move, and, like, I was just pissed. I was like, dude, you guys can't do that. Like, I know you guys think it's fucking <laughs> funny. You know what I mean? Like, you guys think this is fucking funny, but this is like openers, really? like opening for you. You know? I have never heard of that. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, the X thirty two has a, the, a a fucking app you can use on the on a laptop or a tablet that allows you if you can get access, you can use the entire board. Yeah, yeah, those X thirty twos are nice. I've been in bands where we had like a thumb drive and all of our settings were on it and we just handed it to the sound guy and then boom, we just dialed in. That, those are great set. I'm going to be honest. Those are great sets for me. <laughs> those are, uh, that's, it's great. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, these guys have their shit together, but yeah, back to you. I, I apologize for kind of diverting the, the conversation a, a, away from what you were talking about, but, um, uh, oh, it's I, said I would throw that in there. I just thought of another, uh, you asked me about fanboy moments. I just thought of another good one. Be it honest. Uh, so before I joined Motor, Motor Grader, I was a huge fan. And um, I saw that the singer had left, and he had a new band called Five Finger Death Punch. And uh, this was when they were brand new. Their first album had just come out, and uh, not a lot of people knew who they were. So I went and saw them because I love Ivan Moody's voice. Uh, I was a huge fan from the Motor Grader days. And... Um, you know, I went and saw him, and no, there was like nobody there. There was like fifty people there, and uh, oh I went up to shit! Ivan, I went up to Ivan Moody, and uh, I had a Motor Grader poster that I had from like high school, and I and he was like, "Oh shit!" and uh, he, he signed it, and he was telling me what each band member was up to nowadays, and um, so I got him to sign the poster, and I took a picture with him. So fast forward to I'm in Motor Grader, and um, we're touring, and we we just made this huge epic comeback. And like we we were, we were about to release a new album and things were going really good, so we're playing the whiskey, uh, yes. in Hollywood, and uh, all of a sudden we just got done playing and I'm standing on the street smoking a cigarette and a guy walks up to me and he's like, hey man, what's up? And I it was Ivan Moody, and I was like, holy shit, what's up, dude? And uh, he was like, great set, I love the new stuff, you guys are kicking ass, and. Uh, and he was like, where's Nuke? You know, he wanted to talk to our guitar player, Nuke, because uh, they're like old school OG motivator guys. And um, it was just crazy to like go from having him sign my motivator poster to like being in the band and him like telling me that the band's awesome and that he loves what we're doing. That was a, that was a pretty fun moment. Very awesome. Full circle kind of thing, huh? That's. And then, yeah, and then. So he let me in on a little secret. He he said that he saw us. Uh, we played Knotfest with Slipknot and uh, Five Finger Death Punch. And uh, he said that whenever we played that day, he was watching us from the soundboard. And uh, I thought that was just the coolest thing. Good shit, man. Yeah, I remember. I, That's fucking killer. I saw them and They were, did a oh, Knotfest run in like 03, right? Or some somewhere around there. 02. I think I, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've seen it Moto Grader live once. But, it, yeah, it was fucking yeah, pretty intense, man. That's where I first saw Motivator. I, I went to OzFest 2003. 
it was like 10 in the morning yeah. and Motor Grader came out and blew my mind. I was like just a bunch of crazy tribal painted up dudes playing this loud, aggressive, heavy metal. And I, I just right then I was hooked and I was like, I want to do that. I want to, I want to be like that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, shout out to the man Ozzy and Sharon for putting us all into uh, an extended family fan base kind of thing, man. And uh, what they did for music. Yeah, is, dude. So that's, all Fest is happening again this year. Fuck yeah. Is it just one date or are they Fuck actually yeah. doing the whole thing? No, I'm seeing a couple pop up. There's one in New York. There's one in uh, uh, California. I don't know how many they're doing, but so far I've seen New York and California. Did they uh, announce a, a lineup yet or just dates? Yeah, it's 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 like it's a bunch of bands that have done it a lot, you know, like Rob Zombie and I think it might be like Marilyn Manson <laughs> and Ozzy and... Oh, oh yeah, hell yeah. Got a great lineup. I think Devil Driver's doing it, maybe. I'm not sure, but there's a whole bunch of good bands on there. Good deal. I, I'm sure Devil Driver's going to do it if you know if they put it on, because uh, like Sharon's really tight with uh, um, yeah. Dizzy and all those people. You know what I mean? Like uh, That was their yeah. original management. I'm sure they'll do it. That's, that's fucking sick, though. You know what I mean? Like uh, That's super fucking sick. I, I fucking... Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to OzFest this year now. I want to go to OzFest. Yeah, OzFest had a huge influence on me. I went to a bunch of those back in the day, and there was always, like, new bands to discover, and OzFest was great. Definitely. The uh, They're doing a... Uh, oh, what the hell? Shit, I just, my mind just blanked. Dirt, dirt, dirt. <laughs> I can't. The it's going to be okay, ever, okay, Jimmy. That's in New York. Why the fuck can't I remember that? Um, oh, I... I don't know. Well, welcome to ADHD podcast. <laughs> you talking about Lollapalooza? No, 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 no. The one the, they did originally with like Hendrix and shit in the seventies, and they oh Woodstock. Yeah, oh, Woodstock. Woodstock. Jesus Christ, how can I remember that? I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're bringing Woodstock back. Yeah, that's gonna be sweet. I I'm gonna go to New York for that if if they pull it off this year. No way, I'd... dude. Yeah, that could be fucking sick, dude. Like, uh, fucking sick. So, uh, what, hold on a second, my, my phone just went off. Beep, beep. <laughs> beep, beep, Richie. The moniker. That's, that's funny. Dude, I, uh, I just wanted to bring up, uh, the, all the craziness going on in California right now. Jesus. Like, half the freaking state's burning down, and then now we have these huge, crazy thunderstorms rolling in. It's been raining here, which it never rains here. It's been raining, uh, for the past few days. I, I went, uh, I try to run or walk every day and uh, i got caught i got caught in it earlier got soaked oh, oh did you like what part of california are you in uh i'm on the central coast so i'm near like the pismo beach area okay uh i'm like two or three hours from la i spend quite a lot of time in la um but actually to be honest uh i live in a town called lompoc and uh right right here attached to lompoc is surf beach and, um, dude, I, I, uh, I filmed a short film recently, like a really stupid, I mean, it's horrible, uh, like horror slash comedy short film about shower sharks, like sharks that attack you in the shower. And, uh, <laughs> so awesome. that I, I went to the beach, to, I went, yeah, I went to the beach to film some footage and I, it, as it turns out, I did some research and surf beach is like one of the most dangerous shark beach, shark beaches in the country. Like, there's a list of great white shark attacks and deaths uh, on the internet, and Lompoc, yeah. uh, Surf Beach, is like the two or three latest ones are here. Like, a couple people died from great white shark attacks right here in this town I live in. That's great. Oh, wow. That's uh, that's that's brutal. Yeah, my, my dumb, ridiculous uh, short film is on YouTube. Uh, it's called Shower Sharks, if anybody wants to... Check it out. It's pretty oh, yeah, ridiculous. Dude. We'll put a plug in the uh, in the comments. We'll, we'll plug the shit out of it. We'll plug the shit out of the video. I, uh, I make a lot dude. of videos. I I do I do stand up comedy and uh, I make stupid comedy videos in my spare time. And so uh, you can watch all my videos on YouTube. Hell yeah, man! <laughs> we'll put it. We'll definitely pump some pump some. Uh... Dude, we'll plug. It. Yeah, bro. Like, uh, yeah, we we both used to live in fucking San Diego for a while. Um, like, we'd love. Dude, California is fucking awesome. It's it's yeah, it's amazing. It's just really expensive. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, 
I miss burritos out there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Hell yeah, burritos! Oh, Lord! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, 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 it, you go eat a like like a burrito in the Midwest, and you're like, man, what the fuck is this shit? After you eat some shit from Southern California, you're like, what the fuck is this? Why the fuck are you selling me this horse crap? Is this horse yeah. meat? You know, you go to Southern California, you're like, oh man. Yeah, you know what? I've been spoiled my whole life. I grew up in Texas. I lived in Texas for like 20-something years, and so I always got really good Mexican food, and then I moved to California, and the same here, just amazing Mexican food. So uh, I love me some burritos. I'm actually going to go to my buddy's house today and watch the Dallas Cowboys game and uh, make tacos. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Carne asada? Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Oh, and there's a thing here called oh. Cali Burritos. Oh, yeah. And if you're not hip to the Cali Burrito, it's carne asada, and it's got french fries on it. It's fucking am What? You hear that, ladies and gentlemen, from all around the planet? You need to go to Southern California and get yourself a fucking Cali Burrito, because it's life-changing. Cali Burrito! It's fucking shit life-changing, people. It really is. Yeah. California is awesome. I mean, my favorite thing about it... Uh, I, I talk about this in my stand-up comedy a lot. I make fun of Californians for the way they tell directions. Like, I'm from Texas, and in Texas, if you give somebody directions, you're like, uh, just take I-35 to Highway 101, and and you're there. You know? <laughs> and then, it, dude, in California, everybody sounds like fucking Ninja Turtles describing like a wet and wild fucking water park <laughs> roller coaster ride. They're like, just hop on the 101, and that'll blast you down to Marina Del Rey. <laughs> it's different different type of people out there man it's a it's a beautiful place have you ever tried to be on kill tony uh i was on kill tony dude it was insane whoa uh, it was, whoa it was, it was shark week and uh i was down in la trying i had a goal i had a really stupid goal in my head of uh i i prepared this whole set list of shark jokes and shark week jokes and so I went down to L.A. I was sleeping in my car every night. I was trying to do comedy every night of Shark Week. And uh, one of those nights I went on Kill Tony, and I did not expect them to call my name. And they called me up there, and uh, I ended up doing a fucking drum off, a drum battle with the drummer. That was you? Yeah. That was you? I mean, I've watched every episode. No offense. I've watched every episode of Kill Tony. That was you? Yeah, was it, was were you the me. first drum battle? Were you the first was, drum battle? No, I wasn't the first drum battle. They said that, that that had happened before, but I was the only guy that the audience seemed to think that I had won the battle. Oh, shit. That's fucking killer. Oh, my God, dude. Like, uh, I, so, like, I, I, I have, like, a, a, mi a minute set if I ever fucking go and kill Tony. I, I oh, literally yeah. have a fucking minute. I have my own minute set, if and it's about dating on the Internet and the Internet. Oh, nice. But, uh, yeah, dude, like, I have my own set in case I ever get on Kill Tony. That's fucking yeah. amazing, dude. It, it went really well, because a, a lot of people get ripped to shreds, and I was really glad that I didn't get ripped to shreds. Uh, I went up there and told a bunch of jokes about uh, Uber driving, and it, it, went, it, didn't, it didn't go horribly. So. I, I, think I, I, know that, I think I know that set. Like, I swear to God, I've seen it, man. Like, I, I'm positive I've, I've seen you on Kill Tony, dude, like, because... Um, I've been trying to tell, get James into Kill Tony lately, and like uh, we were talking about, oh, holy shit, dude, that's fucking amazing. That's fucking uh, dude. I have a, a thou. I love you a thousand times more now, like a thousand times. You have no idea. Speaking of <laughs> Uber driving, so I'm an Uber driver, and uh, a lot of my comedy material has been coming from that lately. And I, I swear to God, this is a true story. The other night, I was driving in Santa Barbara, and this dude grabbed my junk. He, like, sexually assaulted me. Holy shit. He, he sat in the, What'd you do? He sat in the front seat, and uh, the conversation took a really weird turn. Like, uh, I, we, I, he, he started talking about strip clubs, and I was like, I don't know, man. Strip clubs don't really do it for me. And he was like, oh, yeah, well, what does do it for you? And I was like, I don't know, I guess music. And he was like, oh, yeah, does it get you hard? And I was like, what? Oh, and before, oh, I could oh, even, before I could do anything, he reached his hand over, put his hand on my leg, and he was like, are you good? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. What's up, dude? And then he just started gra like aggressively grabbing my crotch and fondling me. I grabbed his <laughs> hand and forcibly removed it. And I was like, dude, are you serious? What are you doing? Has that ever worked for you? 
And he was like, I'm sorry, I've had a bad day. <laughs> so he took it out on your crotch. Yeah. <laughs> the, the most embarrassing part of it was when he got out of the car, just out of sheer habit, because mm. I do it every time, I, I was like, have a nice day. <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow. Did he thanks, you? For the, thanks for the free crotch grabbings. Thank you. I don't know if he um, me, but I reported him. <laughs> I would have too, man. Slam my car and punch and probably would have been throwing fucking hands. Well, yeah, like, it didn't really affect me that much. I kind of thought it was funny, but I reported him just because I felt obligated to because you never know what his next move is. Like, his next move could be, like, choking somebody out or some weird shit, you right. know? Yep. Creepy fucking moment. <laughs> That's an Uber driver. Is that going to so, go into your stand-up material? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is... This is kind of off subject, but I just remembered uh, Dirty Machine, a band on Zombie Shark Records. Uh, they got a new single coming out on December 14th. It's called Against the World. There's going to be a video with it. And uh, Ulrich Wilde, the guy who recorded, uh, you know, like Static X and a bunch of huge oh, yeah. bands, uh, he, yeah, pro- yeah, yeah. he produced it. That song's coming out soon. That's what I've been working on today and yesterday is uh, we're uh, distributing the song and getting the press release we, ready. Uh, we're actually going to have him on on the podcast probably right before NAM or a week or two after the holidays. So he's on the... Who, David? No, uh, Ulrich. We're, we're going to have him on the podcast. Oh, Ulrich, cool. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Following his work for years, cool. man. He's, uh, he's legendary. Love that dude's work. Yeah, man. He, this new track is a banger, and I think it's going to be the biggest thing they've done so far. Um, they they made headlines recently because they were talking shit to POD and the press got a hold of it. Oh, what are those guys doing now? Like that's that, that's from the, uh, um, oh god, it's from the, the like the Jay Bomagarner camp. Yeah, they're still doing stuff. Still fucking out there, man. I they uh <clears throat> they just did an acoustic set. Uh, I think in. A record store. I, I saw something on Facebook a couple days ago, but yeah, they're they're out there killing. Them. Uh, yeah, they're still going. Yeah, you know what I'm ready for is this new Slipknot. Uh, they're gonna. They just announced today they're gonna start recording in January and then release a new album in summer of 2019. Yeah, next that's next awesome. year's got a lot on on the release schedule for a bunch of the yeah. big metal bands, dude. There's supposed to be a new Corn record, new Slipknot, Tool, Rammstein. And that's just what I yeah. know off the top of my head. Uh, it's going to be a great year for music in and, 2019. Uh, and yeah, hopefully, if everything pans out how we want it, uh, we'll have a full-length uh, Jeffrey Nothing album coming out. That's what we're working on right now. Fuck yeah, man! Don't stop with that. You guys are, you guys have a very, very powerful sound, and there's nothing, oh, yeah. no, nothing quite like a motivation of a little bit of uh, anger and points to prove and i'll leave it at that you know i don't want to stir any feathers but i can i can hear the uh i can hear the the fuck yous in it you know yeah. without saying them yeah dude and that, that's kind of that's one of the crazy things about being in this project also is like you know me and tommy and jeff were kind of in the same boat uh as far as like a really bad experience with our former band and now we're kind of out to prove ourselves and and show everybody what's up. So you're going to hear a lot of angst in this album for sure. <laughs> it, it's it's very apparent yeah, to that, me just in the first couple tracks that you guys have released. It's it's going to be good, man. Just keep keep grinding, and I I, I have a gut feeling that the next year or so is going to you're, you're going to surprise a lot of people because they're scared. I think so. The uh, I, I I think I think you guys are going to kill it, dude. Like like the the last single you guys just put out was like, it's super fucking awesome. I fucking love that song, Dead Space, uh, Dead Inside. It, it's a fucking great song, you know. And uh, it's very unique. It's poppy, but very unique to you guys. Like you guys as individual musicians, it's very fucking unique. It's rare that that bands like they they catch this kind of like poppy feel. And then, like, they have their own unique thing. Because there's a ton of bands that we could all name that, like, they, they pull off the poppy feel, but they sound like everybody else. Right. You guys, yeah, you guys definitely. definitely sound like yourself. I've, and I've always been kind of drawn to that, you know? Like, the Browning, that's what drew me to wanting to do that project back in the day. Um, 
you know, I'm the original drummer from that whole thing, and uh, that's what drew me to that project was how unique it was, you know, like, a lot of bands tried to copy us um, after the Brown. I, I love that fucking band. I love that. F- I, I mean, seriously, I fucking love the Browning. Like, the first album you guys came out with, I was just like, fuck, man. You guys yeah, are fucking amazing. Yeah, the album amazing. that I recorded drums on was called Burn This World. And, um, yeah, we kind of blazed the path for ourselves uh, with the whole techno EDM mixed with, you know, death metal and death core and metal core. And they're still going strong. They're still doing it. Johnny McBee, he's, uh, they're still touring Europe and doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, I think you guys are the first, you guys were the first band to do that kind of style, to be honest. Like, there was a bunch of people, like, had that going on, like, afterward. Like, it, it kind of well, became a yeah. trend. We kind of we kind of took what was kind of going on a little bit and just amped it up to, like, you know, level 9,000. Like, we just took the electronic element and just skyrocketed it into oblivion, you know? We just, like, had that going behind the, the metal, like, the whole time. Like, a lot of bands would do, like, little electro, like, breakdowns or little electro parts. We just took that and said, okay, we're going to do that, but, like, the whole time. So it's basically synth backdrops with, like, breakdowns over it. <laughs> so you guys had a, a contest last year um, to sign a band to your record label. Um, I didn't find out who actually won that contest. Probably because I'm, I'm, I'm sem- semi-lazy, you know what I mean? I hate to say it, but uh, I wasn't able to find the information. Uh, yeah, I, I have a I have a like a booking and promoting thing that I've been doing for a while called the uh, Swarm of Sharks Entertainment, and we held the contest to discover an up and coming unsigned band, and we had like a hundred something bands sign up, and uh, I got a bunch of my friends in the industry to judge it, uh, like Aru Luster from Il Nino, and um, Austin from Devil Driver. And uh, pretty much everyone across the board, all the judges unanimously voted for a band called The Rift from L.A. Okay. And okay. The Rift is so good. <clears throat> if you haven't heard The Rift, you got to go listen to their single called Rock Narcotic. And it's, it's kind of, you just got to give it a chance. It's an acquired taste. It's not heavy metal, but it's kind of like The Muse. It's, mm-hmm. it's kind of uh, like alternative rock, alternative metal style. But their you. song "Rock Narcotic" is insane. Good deal. I'll have to check it out, man. That's that's yeah, I'll, dude. I'll definitely check it out. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll we'll post a link to it, like in the in the YouTube uh, description. You know, it, like so people like we're we're gonna plug everything you have. You know what I mean? Like we are totally going to plug everything you fucking have. So if you go to zombie uh, there's, we have a lot of talented bands from all over the world. I've signed bands from Sweden, Israel, uh, Mexico. I mean, just everywhere. So yeah, zombie You can discover all the badass bands that we have. Fuck yeah. So can I ask you a question, Noah? Okay. If you were to put together your ideal festival, okay. And you could pick anybody from, past present who would you have on the bill uh i don't know man uh, you know some some weird things have happened uh that have kind of made this like a point of no return but if i were to rewind maybe like a year ago when i was still in motor grader what i really wanted to see happen was slipknot mushroom head motor grader mudvane wow yeah a lot of people have called for that on online i've i've seen a lot of people have, wanting to see that sh- type of show so you know but uh you know if i had to say who it would be today man i don't know I- i'd like to see just a huge like new metal revival tour happen I, uh like all the bands all the huge new metal bands like corn slipknot system of a down limp biscuit maybe i'll get all those guys together dude that would be the sickest I mean, just like, just, just fucking, that'd be sick as fuck. Like family values, but like 2018. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Problem is we're all getting older <laughs> and all the, our taste in music is like the old guy shit now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's the, the really cool thing about the music industry right now is if you're a metalhead, there is no better time to like rise and overcome because a lot of bands <clears> are fizzling <throat> out right now. Like 
Metallica, who knows how long they're going to last. Slayer's calling it quits. Kiss is calling it quits. People are dying. Bands are ending. Uh, right now is like the new... I think we're about to see something crazy happen where like this new breed of heavy metal heads are going to rise and we're going to see some crazy shit happen because everyone's being phased out. So the playing field is being uh, leveled. I agree with you. No, I, I totally agree with you. Like that's... Uh... I think that's exactly what the industry's heading. And uh, it's kind of the way that we're shaping this podcast because, like, we see so much great talent that's out there. We see so many great people that are out there that um, it's the new – it's 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 this new movement. You know what I mean? It, it's the time for the people that are, that, are, that are our age. And it's our time. You know what I mean? It's our time, you know? Um, the, the greatest bands that are going to be out there right now are going to be populated by people that are, you know, roughly 35, you know, a little bit older. You know what I mean? And that's going to be the, the shape of the industry here pretty soon. You know, changing of the guard. So outside of metal, do you listen to anything else? Yeah, man. I, my, my tastes are so insanely eclectic. Like, uh, if I if I talked about it, people would re- revoke my metal card, so to speak. But <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> like, but I don't really like. I don't really think that way. Like, they, people can think what they want. I like what I like, and um, I, I play a lot of acoustic guitar. I've been learning a whole set of songs lately that are just crazy. Like, like I like Ace of Base. <laughs> oh, oh no no! no. no. <laughs> All yeah. that she wants is another you know, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Like I, I like pop music. I like oldies. I like alternative. I like grunge. I like a lot of rap. I like everything. So my, if you looked at my Spotify playlist, it's pretty out there. Um, I, I heard that you you uh, signed a band from Israel. Yeah, they're called Hot. Are Hot you a, are are you a fan of um, Infected Mushroom? Yeah, dude. Infected Mushroom was cool. I used to listen to that back in the day. Uh, kind of like crazy uh electronic stuff absolutely you know what i mean i, I kind of felt that in the browning like maybe you guys like listen to infected mushroom and were like holy shit let's put this in the metal <laughs> i don't know i don't think infected mushroom was like a big influence with that with those guys uh but it, it's you know it's infected mushrooms cool I, I like stuff like that i'm, I'm a, i was more of an old school guy and johnny the the head guy uh, with the Browning, he he was more of a new school guy, but uh, we had some comments ah. for sure. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was just trying to. Um, yeah, dude. So so okay. Tell me more about the band that, that you did sign from Israel. Then. Oh, they're called Hotbox, and uh, this band Hotbox from Israel, they have the coolest music videos you got to go watch their music videos and uh we re- i released an album from them called white trash and uh it, it's it's pretty good like if you like head pe if you like really heavy groovy groove oriented uh stuff they sound exactly like old school head pe okay okay so um we we have a ton yeah, of I used, to, uh, I, used, I used to listen to a lot of head pe back in the day um, to be honest, like uh, they they were a fucking cool fucking band, they were a lot of fucking fun. Um, if you went to a show, they they it was a fucking good show, every single time. You know, um, them and cut. Ka- Ka- oh, I was just gonna say I did two tours with them, and uh, they're an insanely talented live band for sure. It's always a good party, man. They bring it, yeah. Who are the Cowboys playing? Another today? another. Oh, I don't even know, man. I'm not like a huge sports guy. Uh, my buddy Brian, uh, he uh, he's a huge sports nut, and uh, I'm gonna go pick up Mylon, the bassist from Motor Grader. Uh He was in the band with me for a long time. He was in that band a long time, but I'm gonna pick him up, and we're gonna go over to Brian's and watch some football, eat some tacos. God damn, man! Like, dude, I swear to God, dude, West Coast tacos, West Coast burritos, West Coast. You hear that sign, Richie? Where, where are you guys at, go. Curry? No, we're 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 all over the country. Uh. Um. So so like right now he's in he's in Michigan, and I I'm, oh, yeah. I'm like right outside of, right outside of Nashville. Oh, okay. So like we're in we're like in three different spots. You know what I mean? Um. So like that's the way we're doing this right now. Um. So in Nashville I can get good like spicy chicken, but I can't get good burritos. 
You know what I mean? Like, I can, I can get good spicy chicken, but I can't get good burritos or tacos. Yeah. He can get a a bunch of fucking northern food that, like, we can't get, you know. Great but, beer. That's, that's all I've found so far. I'm in the middle of nowhere <clears throat> in the woods. It's sweet, though. I don't really well, like hopefully I'll, oh, hopefully I'll be doing uh, some touring with uh, nothing, and uh, we can hang out, have a beer or something. Oh, yeah, dude. If you, next time you guys got a show in Cleveland, I'll head down. It's not... I don't know. It's probably five or six hours for me. It's not too far. I'll make a. I will definitely make it to the next show. I just relocated from St. Louis about two weeks ago. Just had to get a change of environment. But you know, we're kind of uh, Rich and I are kind of in the same boat. That at some point in the not so distant future, we're probably going to have to relocate back out west for the second time, and hopefully uh, things will work out differently from our previous employers. Yeah. So, but it's good times, man. We really enjoy doing this and talking to people and helping, you know, cultivate people's projects and, you know, just, uh, just be out there and, you know, a voice of positivity and rooting people on because we're both musicians ourselves and, you know, we haven't had the extent of the, you know, the, the track record of success that you, you have and the other people that we've interviewed, but a lot of what you guys talk about is relatable to things that we've seen and you know we're just we're just trying to be a oh, beacon yeah. of beacon of help to to everybody out on the scene that's really the basis of why we started this and you know you're catching this in the infant stage i think this is what what the 15th or 16th episode we've done dude i'm i mean so it's it's still well, you just gotta keep on keeping on man you just you just gotta stick absolutely. to your guns absolutely. and not give up that's what i did that's that's the only way to go man you, you can only face forward you know, fail, fail forward and fail fast and learn from it. And that's uh keys to success, dude. But to hear what you've pulled off and, you know, being in our rough age, age group, it's like, man, you, you hats off to you, man. You're, you've done a lot. It's, it's really cool to see. And, uh, wearing all I those appreciate hats, it you know? and I, for having me. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. It's been cool. For sure, dude. Well, Noah, we appreciate your time, man. Uh, you know, if you you have any last words, last rights, here here we go. The, the only last thing I would say is just if anybody's listening that is in a band or is trying to whatever it is, if you're an artist, if you're a musician, whatever you're trying to do, you just you really have to uh, not give a fuck what anybody says or thinks about what you're doing because there's always going to be haters. There's always going to be people that are trying to bring you down or stop you or not believe in you and you just really have to believe in yourself and be willing to sacrifice everything to make your dreams happen. Like whenever, whenever I was coming up in the local scene, I realized I wanted more and needed more. And I, I packed up my clothes and my drums in my car and I drove to Hollywood and, um, by myself. And I lived in a jam space, a little rehearsal room. I was cooking, yeah cooking hot dogs on a George Foreman grill, uh, showering at the YMCA. My car broke down the day I got there. And, uh, I just, I just did all that for a chance to try to make it in the music business. And, um, one thing I did was just try to ignore the haters and, uh, just stay true to myself and chase my dreams at all costs. You know, and if you let, cause that's the thing is most people end up giving up or quitting uh, or falling off the wagon, and you just gotta stick with it and keep going. We well, heard it from, absolutely. You heard it from the man himself, Noah, that mm-hmm. you have to keep going because if you quit, you quit on yourself and you quit on your team. There is no quit. Keep going, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And and you and you never know when it's gonna happen. Like I didn't sign a record deal till I was 27 years old, and when I was 27, I thought I, I thought I was too old and that my career was gonna be done. And now here here I am, 35, and um, I, you know, I've accomplished all my wildest dreams. I've toured the world. I've, I've, uh, I've gotten endorsement deals and signed record deals and had CDs in stores. And I never thought any of this was going to be possible, but I just stuck with it and a bunch of cool shit happened. So you never know. So if I come out there though, I got to say this, dude, if I come out there, we're both going to try to get on Kill Tony the same night. What do you think oh, about that? Dude, if you, it's the luck of the draw, man. They draw your name out of a bucket. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I know. So go for it, man. Hey, let me know whenever dude, you go, and yeah. I'll, maybe I'll try to do it with you. Dude, let's, let's go the same night, man. It sounds like fucking a lot of fun. 
Like, oh, my like, oh my god, dude! Like, uh, there there was something about your voice that I was like, dude, I I think he's been on Kill Tony. I was just like, uh, there's something about like your voice. I was just like, he's been on Kill Tony, and I was like, okay, man, like uh, that instantly made me be like, well, dude, like he's fucking awesome. Yeah, like, that, people. It's really weird. People uh, recognize me from it. Like uh, I've I've been at the comedy store a few times since then, and people are like, hey, you're that sharp guy, and. Uh, even online, like in the nothing uh, fan groups online, mm. people are like, "Hey, you were on Kill Tony," and I'm like, "What the hell? This is crazy." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, that's fucking sick. Times, man. All right, man, we're gonna get off of here and uh, ADHD podcast fucking fandom. We love you guys, fucking Noah Shark. Oh my god, man, this guy's a fucking amazing. Um, Check him out on his episode. Try to find his episode of Kill Tony. Like, that's that's even cooler. Try to find his episode of Kill Tony. If we can pick yeah. it up on the uh, internet, man. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely leave a link there. It'll be... It, people need to see it. I don't remember... I don't remember which one, but I might be able to find it and send you a link or something. I, I, I think I, I think I can... I watch the fucking show every right. day. <laughs> I swear to God. Every fucking week I watch the show, I'll be able to find it. Um, but, dude, that's fucking killer, dude, man. Like... We love, I support your comedy career. Like, that's, that's fucking awesome. Um, music career, dude, record label owner. Amazing. Man that wears many uh, dude, I'm still oh. broke somehow. <laughs> we're all broke. It's America. Oh, hey, hey, let's be honest. We're all fucking broke somehow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, all love to you. We fucking love you. Uh, you guys are um, awesome. Thanks, man. We appreciate thank you, you thank calling you, man. in. And, uh, be a few days, and uh, as soon as it's ready, man, I'll email you, and we'll we'll, we'll pump it out there into the digital world. All right, I appreciate it. You guys are awesome, and uh, take care, and I'll, I'll see you guys out on the road. Sounds good. No, uh, keep doing it. what yeah, you're yeah. doing. Appreciate it, man. Right, Have a good one. Thank you. Later. Have a good one. All right, metal. 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 metal! <laughs>